Hi everyone, welcome back to Red Path. Uh, this is episode 24 of Whack Weekly, uh, the show where we look at Team Red Path news as well as world eaters out in the world. Um, this week, 300 and even 300 games played, 53% uh, win rate, and a near miss on a podium at Major, um, as well as five RTT event wins. Quite a few games once again, a uh, decent amount of movement in the rankings as well, which we'll get onto in a bit. Um, so as I mentioned, 300 games this week, 73 players, um, so 35 RTTs and 38 GT or Super Majors. Um, there were five event wins, they were all RTTs. Um, I think we're looking at four of the list later, so um, all, four, four of the RTTs were decent size, so 20, 20-ish, that kind of mark. Onto the rankings, um, we have a new new contender in the, in the top spot this week. Uh, Matthew Tweedle takes top spot with a strong performance at the Animo GT Twenty Three, um, a major this weekend. Um, he also fills out his four World Eaters events, which takes him to a total of seven hundred twenty three point five ITC points. Liam Wyzik remains in second on six hundred sixty four. Um, Peter Duff is down in third with six hundred forty nine. Although he still has a good Warhammer Fest performance to come in. I'm hoping the event comes in. We'll see. Um, Antonius Tolman is up to fourth um, with a good RTT performance this week, seeing him to 648 points. Um, and Calvin Smith is in fifth with 639.8. Um, yeah, so a decent amount of movement there. Um, quite a few um, event performances this weekend. As I say, we, we are still waiting on first, um, so that affects me and Dara as well. Um, so for the red path, um, Jamie is in 17th with 463.6. I'm in 21st with 437.45, with Fest still to come. I really hope it goes up. <laughs> and then Dara in 53rd with three events and 332, again with Fest still to go up, and Dara's Fest score will be big, I would imagine. Um, up next, we've got ITC Team Red Path News. Um, so, two people in action from the team this week, both at the same event. Um, so Josh Connor, uh, Lemon Russ in the Discord, um, went three and three at the Ragnarok GT in Kent. Um, yeah, I mean, so he his first game was a mirror match into uh, another World Eaters player. Um, this World Eaters player went on to finish fourth, um, and Josh lost that one forty one ninety three. Um, game two played against Black Templars, got a hundred points um, to fifty three, solid win there. Um, then game three was another 100 point win um, into Tau this time, so 100 points to 50. Uh, game four was possibly the highest scoring loss I've ever seen, which was a 96 100 loss um, against Necrons. Um, game five was an 89 91 loss against Guard. It was an all tanks, all vehicles list, but it was basically like nine Sentinels, a load of Lemon Russes, and uh, Lord Solo Leontus. Um, but yeah, another tight feat there. Um, and then last game, he he unfortunately went down 83-88 to Iron Warriors. Um, so, I mean, aside, game, game one aside, the the day two games were all very, very close. I think it was a total differential across the three games of, what, like 6, 11 points? Pretty good. Pretty pretty tight, tight defeats. Um, then on to his list. Um, I believe this is Josh's... Uh, so Imperatus with his Warlord trait, Juggernaut Lord with Berserker Glaive. Uh, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, thirty Berserkers. Um, all with icons, all with eviscerators, two big squads of eight bound for the pre-game move, three individual spawn, two laser destroyers, uh, vindicated laser destroyers. Um, they were doing work for him by the sounds of it. Um, so they get uh, three shots, they're flat damage six. Um, if they move, they they have the old reroll ones do more. Uh, the the old ones to hit do more wounds to yourself. Um, so they would like get hot roll. But um, yeah, apparently by the sounds of it, they were doing work for Josh um, over the weekend. Um, then two rhinos just to to run it up and give the berserkers some cover and also staging points. Um, yeah, like a cool list. Uh, this is the first time I've seen vindicated laser destroyers being used. Um, and I'd say. Uh, Josh went on to finish uh, three and three. Um, I believe that put him at eighteenth, but I'm not sure. Um, 
I might have got that wrong. Um, yeah, so that that was Josh uh, at the Ragnarok GT event in Kent. Um, I was also at the <laughs> Ragnarok GT in Kent. Um, it didn't go very well for me. Um, I, yeah, I, I didn't really like the train layouts. Um, it was sort of, it, it was marketed as GW and it was sort of was GW in that it was on Perth, Perth squares, but there were only two big, big pieces. Um, and the big pieces were not that big. Um, and it, some, and there was one layout for every mission and that meant some missions were just not great. Um, we'll get onto that. The game one um, was tied to conviction. Um, I played against Novot Necrons. Um, I went first and managed to move block a lot, do quite a lot of damage to his monolith because he had a monolith, um, and killed uh, basically killed all of his fast units, so killed all of his tomb blades. Um, uh, monolith combat is surprisingly like hilarious. You get six attacks, they auto hit, and it's flat damage three. <laughs> it killed most of my eight band in response. Anyway. Um, yeah, so I, I mentioned we've got quite a lot and do do the same thing with Berserkers in turn two. Um the big turning point was turn three though. Um I got a fairly lucky charge on his night side with my Demon Prince. Um so he brought he had to bring on from Strat Reserve because it's a flyer. Um and he he was trying to move it across the field onto my home objective and then just drop out a load of played ones right near me and like an unfailable charge into loads of stuff on my home objective. Which would probably have swung the game his way, but um, I got, as I say, I got a lucky charge in. I say lucky, it was an eight inch, and I, I didn't have to use a reroll, um, but it was there um, into the night side with my Demon Prince. Funny enough, the only thing that could actually hit it in combat, um, and I managed to destroy it before he could do that play of dropping 20 flayed ones into my deployment zone. Um, it ended up being quite a big win, um, so I won 99.36. <laughs> The guy ended up going five and one. I was his only defeat, and he finished third. So bear that in mind when I go through the rest of my games. <laughs> so game two, um, I played against Corn Demons, pure Corn Demons. Um, there were two Bloodthirsters and Scarbrand in this list. Uh, one of the Bloodthirsters was the the he was just unkillable for me. Um, he had face gap which is already a problem for me. He had a five up shrug against everything, which just made it harder to do those eight wounds. Um, and then he also got plus one save against one damage, um, which is lots of my army as berserkers. Um, so I, I didn't kill him. Um, I bounced a little bit in turn one. I went seconds, but um, he moved everything up very aggressively, um, like advances on everything, and then was like, deal with me. And I didn't. So um, my... Eight bound went into the uncapped phase, uh, the uncapped bloodthirster um, with gory dismemberment, uh, plus one damage and six to auto wound, and did seventeen damage to it out of twenty, which is very annoying. <laughs> um, and I was a bit too aggressive in general. I threw too much stuff forwards. Um, I could have held my demon prince back, um, and maybe a squad of um, berserkers, but I went all in and tried to clear everything and. Only really succeeded in half arsing. Like I, I, I think I cleared. What's that clear? I cleared a squad of blood crushers mostly. I cleared a uh, a unit of, flesh, or most of two units of flesh hounds, but didn't quite kill the second one. Um, and then did this seventeen damage to the bloodthirster, and in response lost like, uh, eight eight bound ten berserkers, uh, five berserkers, and my demon prince. Um which was not probably that good a trade. Um, yeah, so I uh, I also, late game, um, fixated on killing that three-wound Bloodthirster because he was still rolling around late game because he basically put, shoved both Bloodthirsters up one flank and then deep struck Scarbrand in the other one, and I just didn't even try and kill Scarbrand. Um, so I charged this three-wound Bloodthirster with five Berserkers to finish him off. Um, and then move like use the piling consolidate to move on to an objective, take it back. So I get to the primary and deny his primary. Um, he used frenetic bloodlust um, on his blood letters, which um, meant they could all move on to the objective. Meant I didn't take it and didn't deny his primary. Um, That's quite a big turning point. Um, I think it was only worth four from memory. And I'll, I'll spoilers, I lost by six. Um, so I'm not sure it did necessarily lose me the game, but. 
we were talking about it after the game, and he was like, you should have just charged the bloodletters, because the berserkers would have just wiped the floor with them, and then he'd have the objective. Uh, but my counterpoint was, then the, the bloodthirster just charges the berserkers next turn, sure, I fight on death and kill him too, but then I just don't have the berserkers. Whereas the way I did it, um, charged the thirster, killed it, moved on to the objective, the bloodletters had moved on to the objective as well. For whatever reason, he didn't charge the, the berserkers the next turn. Um, so my berserkers went through them and then went through another squad of bloodletters as well on a different objective. Um, and I think it was, it's hard to tell. Like in that moment, that play was worth four points to him. Um, and I think it probably was worth more in the long run, maybe, but it's hard to tell. Um, that's the main thing I can think of in terms of why I lost that. Um, I lost 79-85. Um, it was a very bloody game. I just couldn't deal with the pace cap bloodthirster. With the amount of like durability he had to the top of say the four up unrendable save, the three up unrendable save against Berserkers, um, and the five up shrug. Just and he rolled quite hot on his five ups and his four ups actually. Um, it just made it a really uphill battle for me for the whole game. Um, yeah, so that was game two. Very really nice play, really fun game. Um, it was just a smash fest, which is good, just always good fun. Um, he lost a lot of his army too. Um, and then finally. On day one, um, game three was more demons. Um, I played Franco McDonald, who I played before. Um, last time I played him was a pure Zeech list. This time he was playing mixed demons um, with Bellacore, some demonettes, um, a load of flamers still, and then what else? Some fucking Nurglings. Again, again, Berserkers failed to kill a squad of Nurglings, which was good, good fun. Um, and he was laughing his ass off about it. Um, but uh, so yeah, some Nurglings, uh, Bellacore, some character support, and then another face cap bloodthirster with the five up drug, which was exactly what I was looking for after my second game. Um, yeah, I mean, I I I struggled to kill the face cap again. I nearly did kill him this time, um, just because it was a it was a late game play for like two points for blood for the blood god. I charged my demon prince at an eight wound face cap bloodthirster and failed to kill him, which was and that was with gory. Gory wasn't going to do much because relatively low volume of attacks, but um, yeah, didn't kill him, didn't even really dent him, um, and that was a bit sad and kind of like summed up summed up the game for me. Um, in terms of what lost me the game, um, I definitely made some tweening errors um, early on. I fixated on the Bloodthirsters deep strike and him, him having a massive base, and I was like, cool, I'll just deny that, and then forgot they had squads of three flamers, and flamers are on tiny bases. Um, so he was able to drop some flamers in my battle and sh shoot them and stay that I probably won't make again um and it meant i had to send stuff back he didn't really kill much with the flames he just used them for out he was doing um battlefield data um so uh yeah i just had to send stuff back for them and then they weren't doing what they needed to do like spreading out onto the, the rest of the field um yeah so i lost 61 85 in that um yeah so end of day one i was one and two not feeling great about myself <laughs> um nearly dropped just because the train was a bit um, and I'd sit mostly on Tide of Conviction because our, your home objective just wasn't really like it was visible for everything. And if I'd played a shooty army, I probably would not have had a good time. But because it was no Bok Necrons that only really had the monolith in terms of shooting, it was it was like kind of fine. Um, but then I did come back for day two because I almost didn't just because of that. Um, I paired into Botan, Ymir, and I was like, cool. It's a very small list because it was triple land fortress, triple land fortress, three squads of three bikes, two squads of five terminators, a high carl, and a broker forge master. Um, the terrain layout was not good for the scouring. <laughs> like, um, you couldn't stand on the middle one without being in line of sight for pretty much the whole of the opposition deployment zone. Um, you couldn't really stand on your home objective without being in line of sight of pretty much the entirety of the opponent's deployment zone. And uh, funnily enough, a list with three land fortresses playing against world eaters don't need to send the land fortresses forward that much. Um, so he just sat back and shot me to death while I tried to play a really conservative game. Um, so I, I was quite happy with how with how I played the game. Considering I um, took banners, I took blood god stew, so I played as passively as possible and tried to force him to come to me. Um, yeah, I mean it, it wasn't a great game. Um, the terrain just made it fairly uninteractive. Um, 
I was also denied a point by. So on blood, I finished. I finished on fourteen out of fifteen for blood Goods due. Um, I did. I did lose the game seventy six seventy seven. Um, I got fourteen out of fifteen on blood Goods due. Um, and I was denied a point by failing to kill what I was assured was a five wound for a care forge master. Turns out he's only four wounds. Um, and that I'm gonna say a mistake. Um, denied me the draw just straight up. Um, a mistake that I made. That lost that lost me the game um was the sequence of my strategic scan so the mission tertiary um i did so i, I used my pre-game move because he he pre-game moved everything backwards basically with his bikes um and so i, I it was he offered basically 10 inch charges for my eight bound so i sent um i used my pre-game move on berserkers to get them on the middle objective and my eight bound to get them on one of his objectives and i scanned one of his objectives first turn just to get it out of the way get three points down um, I did have to trade those 8-bound for it, but I think it's probably worth it in the scheme of things, given my, like, passive game plan. Um, but I, I then assumed I'd lose the middle next, so I scanned the middle next, even where, even though my home, one of my home objectives, my left home objective was just open as fuck. So I ended up actually losing my home objective first, so I should have scanned that in turn two and then gone back for middle because of the way the big L was I could stage onto the middle and get onto it in a turn and scan it and just get it done. So that would have been three points um, and that would have won me the game. But alas, uh, it just, it wasn't a great game. Like, I don't know. Um, there were some complaints about Botan being not great on these boards, which was just funny to me. And, and then there was like, Movement shenanigans with the porches. I tried to like wrap one um, and like some extra. Well, turning 90 degrees was an inch and a half apparently, which doesn't feel right. But yeah, what can you do? Um, so, um, yeah, so after that, I was feeling worse. Like, why have I come back? Um, my game five, I stuck around because it was in Death Guard and I normally have quite, quite fun games in Death Guard. Um, my opponent had slept not very much the night before and um, was not really with it. I don't. I'm still unsure why why he needed why he wanted to come back for the second day if he had because he had like half an hour sleep or something. And I was like, bro, just go home, like go to bed. Um, but uh, so he misdeployed slightly. I got first turn. Um, he misplaced two of his three characters, um, and I killed both of them. So or two of his four characters, but I killed the fight last guy. So the aura of not counters charging and fight last um, with eight bounds, and I killed his malignant plate caster, his only psyker, um, and he took walk ritual. Um, he basically conceded at the bottom of my turn two, and we just speed ran through the rest of the game. Um, so that was a hundred point to seventeen win for me. Um, yeah, he he didn't even bring in his reserves. He just he just like called it, and then I was like, oh, with unpacking, explaining, deployment, first two turns. Uh, and packing away, um, I was done in an hour, and I was like, I'm not going to wait around here for two hours for the next game, so I just left, I dropped, and went home, um, and had a really nice evening instead. Um, so yeah, I went two and three, which was not not great, not what I was really hoping for, um, but I do have my list, if anyone wants to see, because I think the list is good, um, even if the pilot is not. Um, so this is the list I took. Um, so Invocatus with his Warlord trait, a Demon Prince with Talisman of Rage, which is pick a core unit within 9 inches um, in your command phase, and they get 6s to auto wounds. Um, I actually found it really useful. Um, I did like it. The Demon Prince disappoint himself disappointed a little bit, um, but I did like the Talisman. It enabled me to, with a little bit of thought, get 6s to auto wound on one of my 8 bound squads that I used to alpha. Um, and that meant that they could go into slightly bigger targets, like the Bloodthirster, for example, <laughs> that kind of thing, even if it didn't work at that time. But yeah, and then I had seven squads of Berserkers. Uh, two of them had icons, all of them had Eviscerators. Really like the MSU trading style game, um, even if I'm not necessarily that good at it, apparently. Um, three squads, four, eight bound. Um, that was for the alpha, just for the Alpha Strike. Um, if I had points, I'd put them up to five, but I did like the seven squads of Berserkers. And then I had one squad of Exalted just to go and deep strike and make people scream. Um, three spawn, two rhinos, um, used mainly as like, I didn't really drive the rhinos anywhere. I just sat them in a ruin and jumped Berserkers in and out of them to get extra movement, basically. Um, and then I had one Executioner. Um, 
to cut down on points and also still to get mirror fates in um he did he actually weirdly he did i feel like he did more or he was more impactful because i thought about what i was shooting him into a lot more um than when i had two and mirror fates although it didn't go off very much uh it can come in clutch still so because it, it means you can like get the extra cp for an interrupt and fight on death or whatever that kind of thing I, so i still like it i'm probably not going to change this list to be honest the only thing that might be on the shopping block is the imprints um but then it'd be switching in a, a Juggernaut Lord. And I don't know if I'd put Berserk Glaive or Talisman Rage. Because as I say, I really like Talisman Rage. I think it worked quite well. Because um, it means you don't have to buy the power. You can like with the Blood Tide, which I don't normally buy anyway. Um, but you can put it on a, a key unit that you know is going into a hard target. That kind of thing. Um, yeah, so that was my GT. Um, I'm not sure I'm going back. Uh, as I say, the train was a bit... For me, a bit yikes. Um, and I did notice there were a lot of shooting on me. I don't know. I, maybe that's unfair. I, I I didn't buy with the terrain. The scouring was particularly bad, and I think it may have been bad luck that I matched into like probably the shootiest army there um, for that mission. But, yeah. I mean, I, if, if I can avoid that in the future by just not going, then I just won't go. Um, I've got one more event um, for ninth, which is... Gothic Games, my Can uh, Canterbury. Um, it's GT in three weeks' time, two weeks' time, two and a half weeks' time. Um, on the last weekend of May. Um, as I say, I'll probably take this list pretty much. Just bang on this list. Do that. So yeah. Up next, we've got World East Tournament performances. Um, there were fifteen really strong performances this week. So finishing in the top fifteen percent of the events. Fifteen lists being fed into the matrix, uh, which we'll see later. Um, we will be taking a look at the top four lists from this week. Um, so those finishing in the top 5% of their events. Um, starting with Adam Baker at the Las Vegas Monthly RTT. Um, Adam won the event, um, a 19 player RTT, uh, three rounds. Um, so let's look at his list. Uh, it is a Ember Cards with his Warlord trait, Demon Prince with an unnamed relic, sick. Um, 10 Jackals, 2 squads of 5 Berserkers. Max 8, 58 bound, 9 Exalted State bound, 3 Chaos Spawn, and 2 Executioners. That are House Health Tracks, which is... I mean, it's not illegal, but it means you, you technically shouldn't use Blood Tithe. So I'm assuming that's a mistake. Um, or an illegal list. But, okay. Uh, I mean, it's the bones of something similar to... Well, it's, it's, it's all familiar, right? Uh, it'd be interesting to see what relic was on Demon Prince. I mean, it's either going to be the Helm of Brazen Eye, which is the minus one to wound, or it's going to be Talisman of Rage. Um, but yeah, um, max eight bounds just to, or near max eight bounds just to, you know, high braggro uh, executions to hold backfield. Zerkers is like trade pieces, I guess. Um, spawn for early bait um, would be my assumption. Yeah, congratulations to Adam um, on the event win, um, 19 player RTD in Las Vegas. So up next, we have Evan Tomkin Tomchin, um, at the 40 Rock RTT, um, another event win, um, a 20-player RTT this time, um, and this is his list. So Invercarts with his Warlord trait, uh, Juggernaut Lord with Berserk Glaive, sure. uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 Berserkers, uh, 4 Icons, and all Eviscerators. 12, 8 bound, 3 squads, 4, 9 Exalted, 8 bound, 3 squads, 3, 3 Individual Spawn, Two rhinos. Uh yeah, I mean that is that's uh the vanilla list, isn't it? Oh, yeah. That is that list. <laughs> um yeah, we've talked about this quite a lot. This is this is what a lot of people are running, um, doing well. Um, especially in the US. Um Yeah. Then up next we've got Nicholas Redford um at the GTA GTA forty K Spring Clash. Um, this is another event win. Um, he won a 22-player RTT. Um, so Invercarts with his Warlord traits, Juggernaut Lord with Glaive, uh, 10 Jackals, uh, this time with a Warlord Chain Blade as well as Skull Smasher and an Icon. Uh, four squads of five Berserkers, all with Icons and Eviscerators. Five, four, three, eight bounds, so 11. Um, and then six Exalted Eight Bound, two Spawn, a Dread Claw. Dreadclaw for the Jackals, maybe, with the Icon. Although, or just two squads of Berserkers. Um, yeah, Dreadclaw, two quad heavy bolted rapiers, and a Rhino. That's pretty nice. I like that. 
Um, that actually potentially then is two squads of Berserkers in the Dreadclaw. Well, I guess it gives you flexibility, right? Two squads of Berserkers in the Dreadclaw or the, the Jackals in the Dreadclaw and then two squads of Berserkers pre presumably in the Rhino. Rapiers for some fire support, for some cheap fire support and also five wound um, vehicles. So when they die, you get two, two blood type points for the first one in the base. So that's pretty nice. Um, a range of eight bound units to throw forwards with pre-game move, depending on what the target likely targets are. So that's pretty cool too. Um, yeah, so congrats to Nicholas for his event win. Um, yeah, up next we have Manuel Wayand. Manuel Wayand? I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. I apologize. Um, at the Elf Coast Major, the Baltic Cup 11. Um, so this is a was a major, super major, I'm not sure. Major, um, fourth place in a 159 player event. Um, it's a really strong performance. Um, so his event, uh, his list, sorry. He <laughs> Invercast with his Warlord trait, uh, Juggernaut Lord with Berserk Glaive, uh, 5 5 10 Berserkers, um, 15 8 bound, 9 Exalted 8 bound, 2 spawn, a Dreadclaw, presumably for the 10 man, uh, and then a Rhino for the other two fives. Um, that is a very Alpha Strike list. Very Alpha Strike list. Um, yeah, you've got, well, I mean, yeah, you've got the 10 man in the Dreadclaw every time because it's the only one with the icon. So you've got the 10 man in the Dreadclaw. If you go first, you've got 10 Berserkers, Invocatus, and 10 8 bound in your lines turn one, which is, yeah, it's going to cripple most armies. Um, not many armies going to be able to handle that and, like, outscore after that, like, kill all of that relatively easily and then outscore. The 10 man also has the dual threat of. If the opponent tries to clear with shooting in their first turn, so after the alpha, you're more likely to be able to blood surge into something good um, or into anything to stop them being shot like and dying. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty good as a secondary consideration. Yeah, so a really strong list. Um, very well done. Fourth place in a 159 pair event is no mean feat. And finally, we have, well, not finally, uh, up next, we have the unit matrix. So this is just a record of what units, as well as how much of each was used in the top list this week. As I mentioned, there's 15 lists um, in action this week in the top 15% of their events. Um, the main things to note are that Invocatus was in every single list this week. Most, I don't think he's been in every single list yet, um, but he has, he was this week. Um, two spawn at least as well. We're in every single list, um, and then a minimum of six, a floor of six, eight bound. So it does seem people are <laughs> moving to what the internet is saying is good, uh, which are berserks and eight bound. Um, there were quite a few lists using jackals this week. I mean, you can see down here, um, but obviously less, still less popular than berserks and eight bound. Uh, the other thing to note is knight allies, very popular. Um, it was mostly executions this week, but there was one list with brigands as well. Um, yeah, and then obviously Invercarts' Wall of Trait was very popular too. Um, that's also something to note. Um, no, normally it's a bit closer to a 50-50 split with Angron, but this week it was, yeah, 93%. I think the, the, the last list, um, did have Angron, yeah, there you go. The last list did have Angron in it, but, um, yeah. And finally, the great game. Um, so just taking a look at the number of Godline Legion players for each god. Um, so this week, World Eaters have broken the 500 mark. We're up to 505 um, play, uh, registered players. Um, Death Guards at 411, Thousand Sons at 258, and Empress Children down on 123. Um, Death Guards still continuing to grow at decent decent speed. Thousand Sons and Empress Children kind of trailing. Um, I'd expect, I don't know, there might be some, <laughs> yeah. Thousand Suns have probably dropped off a little bit because uh, they just haven't been like really good this this season. Whereas Death Guard still have the old, they were part of a starter box, so a lot of people will have Death Guard. Um, Empress Children just because they don't have their own book and they're quite niche as well. Um, yeah, so that's cool. Um, seeing seeing World Eats, uh be so popular, it's great. Um, obviously, a lot of people doing well with them as well. So that's good. Um, so if you want to be part of the discussion, join the Discord. Um, there's a link down below. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Um, is there anything you particularly enjoy about these videos? Um, anything you want me to dive a little deeper into? Um, anything like that, let me know down below, please. 
always looking to improve. Um, and then, yeah. But yeah, the main thing, guys, is uh, stay healthy, stay safe, and kill me, burn.